Happy Friday, friends. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you have enjoyed your life recently. We've got some news to talk about in the tech world. After I tell you that today's video is brought to you by our holiday slash winter merch. I finally got mine delivered. Look at this RGB tech tree. It's amazing. Our, our graphic designer did a fantastic job on this. I love it so much. If you check the link in the video description, you can pick up some of our holiday merch. At this point, it's too late to get it for Christmas, uh, but if you buy it, then you can have it for next Christmas, or you could just wear it after Christmas, like I will be, because I love it. It just, it's so amazing. Look at it, RGB tech tree. There's also a regular tech tree where it's just white in case you don't like RGB and you're just positionally against it, but we also have some other ones as well that you can check out. So do that. And if you have any money left over, we're gonna talk about today's first article, which is just the Mac Pro gets more expensive in case you know a $25 shirt sets you off that you can't afford this extra upgrade that Apple has now included in the Mac Pro where they have made it available for you to be able to get eight terabytes of storage on the Mac Pro for an additional $1,200 over what was originally the highest class Mac Pro. So that means it is $2,600 over the base 256 gig SSD, which is quite frankly insane. But if you did the fully specced version of the Mac Pro previously, it was a totally affordable $53,000 uh, and a little bit extra, but now it's it's in, in a position where you can't really afford it, which is $54,447 with that extra $1,200 added on. This isn't the only new upgrade that's gonna be coming to the Mac Pro. There's also gonna be some GPU changes that you could potentially add, which is the Radeon Pro W5700X with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and you can either get a single or dual one of those. I doubt that is gonna be more expensive than the current Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo which are sitting at $2,400 a piece. It looks like it'll probably be in between the 580X and the Pro Vega 2's um, duos, rather. Freaking expensive, it's crazy. Anyways, in case you're wondering, is eight terabytes of storage worth $2,600? The answer is no. If we just look on Amazon quickly, to get eight terabytes of just regular SSD SATA 3 storage, you're gonna be set back around $1,100, but in case you want it in an NVMe capacity, I could only find one four terabyte NVMe drive. It's the Sabrent over on Newegg, but even that's only $645 a pop. So you're spending $1,300 to $1,500 to get eight terabytes of either regular SSD or NVMe storage and I, I, mm, I don't think that Apple's gonna be that much faster to warrant double the price tag. It's a little sad, especially since it won't be PCI Express 4.0. So yikes, expensive. But you know, if you're spending twenty dollars to $30,000 on a Mac Pro, what's another $1,200 to get eight terabytes? And then speaking of expensive stuff, I'm sure this new Broadcom network switch is, is gonna be fairly affordable considering that it, with its seven nanometer architecture that they've gotten from TSMC, they're now able to put through speeds of 25.6 terabits per second, which is double their previous 20 or 12.8 on their Tomahawk 3 network switch. Now this is Tomahawk 4, 25.6. This is obviously used in very enterprise solutions with companies like Google and all of them using these insanely fast network switches. But also coming out with something super fast, NVIDIA announced their Drive AGX Orin platform, which is gonna be a replacement for their Xavier SOC that they've been using for autonomous vehicles. This one is supposedly seven times the performance of the previous Xavier SOC with 200 trillion operations per second. This obviously allows it to do deep learning and make sure that it can do level two to level five autonomous vehicle driving. But Nvidia, even after getting spurned by Tesla, who decided to make their own ships, we talked about that in a hot news episode a long time ago. Anyways, they're still pushing forward with autonomous vehicle chip production, even if uh, one of the biggest electric vehicle makers is not going with them. But speaking of Tesla, yesterday they announced the first, world's first introduction of DLC 
for a car. Yes, my friends, in case you want to spend an extra $2,000 on your Tesla Model 3 all-wheel drive, not performance edition, you can shave 0.5 seconds off of your zero to 60 time by increasing your base horsepower and your torque on the electric vehicle. This is the first update that Tesla has put out that's actually increasing the torque on the Model 3, whereas previous updates, such as recent patches, they've given 5% more performance, but that was only to the horsepower output, not to the torque output regardless two thousand dollars paid dlc we're living in the future my friends you can download faster cars that is that is now happening so it's originally quoted that the all-wheel drive version of the model 3 which has dual motors would do 0 to 16 4.4 seconds now with this new update they're saying it's 3.9 however because of other updates that have happened and real world testing it's actually looking like the all-wheel drive versions are coming in at 3.7 seconds compare that to the performance edition which is still faster that that runs about 2.9 seconds right now 0 to 60 which is just crazy it's it's super speed but Tesla has been going super speed at installing their superchargers or not really because they haven't hit their targets but they just announced that they have installed their 15 thousandth supercharger that's not supercharger locations that's still around 15 to 1700 I believe but 15,000 total superchargers installed in the Tesla network and in case you're in San Francisco and you can't get to a supercharger EVgo just announced a partnership where they're going to have Tesla adapt or Tesla plugs so that you can plug in your Tesla's there. That's all the Tesla news. Let's get on into some computer components, which is that Gigabyte uh, apparently has some filings with the EEC showing off that one, the 5600 XT from AMD is real, but then also they're going to be launching a brand new line of cards. Typically, they've been having the gaming and the Windforce edition. Now they're going to introduce an Eagle. Eagle. <laughs> so in case you wanted to fly high and soar on the wings of graphics, with a card, Gigabyte's got you covered with the Eagle Edition. And in case you want special editions of your computer case, NZXT has announced their World of Warcraft special editions of the H510 case coming in both Alliance and Horde. They're gonna have about a thousand units of each coming in at a total price of $200 a pop. Whether or not that's worth it depends on how much you love WoW. So check that out. It's a bit delayed because WoW Classic Hype is basically dead as far as I know, but I don't know, it's not my thing. I don't play well. And I don't play blockchain games, neither does anybody else in the world, but that doesn't stop AMD from announcing that they're partnering with other companies to create a blockchain game alliance for blockchain games. I don't understand. I know how blockchain can be used in games and how it can keep track of items. And yeah, sure, blockchain technology is fantastic. It just looks like a solution looking for a problem rather than it's actually fixing issues that we actually have in games. Great, blockchain's a new payment platform. Our payment platforms aren't really broken. So what do we, I don't know. Blockchain advocates go wild down in the comments. I'm gonna piss a lot of people off from our mining days, but blockchain games, not really a wave of the future, which neither is cloud gaming, but Facebook seems f like they have some information that the rest of the world doesn't know because they just purchased the Spanish cloud gaming company Play Giga, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, for roughly $78 million. Facebook might be using this to bring cloud gaming to VR to introduce more latency to make you sick with their Oculuses. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? You, that's that's how they get everybody to uh, nothing good. I got no good joke there. I'm sorry. But in a good move by Facebook, supposedly they're going to stop using your phone numbers to suggest friends to you. This is coming after the fact that Facebook was caught out using the phone number that they use for two factor authentication or authentication, however you say that. Uh, they've been selling that to advertisers and everybody freaked out and they're like okay we'll stop and then to kind of increase the more security and privacy portion of their site they're also going to stop using it to identify friends who have similar phone numbers or your contact list i don't know i you know i just facebook stop using my data but just because they're gonna stop using your phone number doesn't mean they don't, they wanna stop being on your phone because it's been announced that Facebook is working on developing their own operating system. This is gonna be on the behalf of Mark Lukowski, who is apparently a co-author of Microsoft's Windows NT. He's gonna be building Facebook's operating system for phones and probably like 
everything that they're building, like the Facebook portal and all that stuff, which this is a great plan. You know, this is just like the Facebook phone that they released that everybody went out and purchased because everybody loves Facebook and wants to give them more access, root level access to all of the things that they're doing. Facebook obviously doing this so that they could have more control and not giving the power over to Apple and Google because they hate those companies. They want to be the supreme overlord of the reptilians. So, you know, you can't, you can't have Tim Cook being the supreme overlord of the reptilians. It's got to be the Zuck. And then Intel apparently has acquired the chip maker Habana Labs, who's known for their artificial intelligence designs. This is one area that Intel has actually been diving into quite heavily recently. And in fact, is one of the big advances of the Tendi series that they just launched, the 10980XE, doing significantly better than the 9980XE in AI performance. Uh, so Intel doing AI because they're also having to compete with companies like NVIDIA when it comes to neural networks and artificial intelligence. So them doing that could help them out in the future. But then there's also been leaked benchmarks of a mysterious six core Intel CPU roaming out there, which people think it might be Tiger Lake, but it's interesting because it has more cache than the 10 series that I just discussed. It has 1.25 megabytes of cache, whereas the 10980XE only has one megabyte of cache, which is an interesting design suggesting that it's a brand new architecture considering it's only on six cores and we don't really know of a whole new architecture that's coming out. Intel hasn't really announced a whole lot, so this could potentially be something good. Which, speaking of something good, a lot of people enjoyed Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm not talking about The Rise of Skywalker, because I haven't seen it, so I have no spoilers for you, but I'm sure people down in the comments do, which is why you're not supposed to read the YouTube comments, my friends. Anyways, Respawn hit success with that, and it looks like they're trying to get new developers to help produce sequels by having a job listing that says they're uh, looking for a candidate that's invigorated by the idea of coding third-person action adventure games and has the expertise to create an incredible Star Wars experience. Bam, there you go, more Star Wars games. And speaking of fiction invading reality, in case you wanted to know whether or not uh, the United States had a trade partnership with the country of Wakanda, well, you don't need to wonder anymore because the US Department of Agriculture listed Wakanda as a trading partner in the agricultural tr uh, tariff tracker. There you go. We, we need to get all that vibranium. We, America doesn't produce vibranium, or we have so little vibranium production that we need to put tariffs on the Wakandan ones because we can't have Wakandans taking our vibranium jobs, my friends, it's ridiculous. It's nonsense. And non-socks is what you are if you don't buy these new, also cat-related, Puma gaming socks. Yes, my friends, the company Puma has announced their gaming socks for the regions of the UK and Australia. They're saying that it has medial wrap-up grip for your seek mode, lateral wrap-up support for your attack mode, and heel wrap-up stability for your cruise and defense modes with its active gaming modes, and that it's created with console gamers in mind. What console gamers get off the couch? Like PC gamers, sure, because you're actually doing VR and you stand up and you have full room scale VR, but console gamers? Anyways, these are gonna set you back about $86 after conversion. What? Puma gaming socks for the mobile freaking console gamers out there. Good stuff. Anyways, I'm, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News just being super perplexed because I freaking don't know why you need gaming socks, but all I know is I'm gonna spend $86 to get them myself. So. Spend some money on us by picking up our holiday merch at the link in the video description. Hit the like button to get subscribed, no, and get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content, news, and otherwise. Really appreciate all you guys. Have happy, happy holiday season. That's what I'm trying to say there. I really appreciate everybody who supported us here at UFD Tech this year. Uh, our editor is going on a couple week break, um, which is gonna make things weird as far as video production. So if case I don't see you, good afternoon, goodbye. Eagle edition. Uh, Catlin cut there to Zach Braff from Scrubs shouting Eagle. Eagle! Ooh.